The Quran, in several verses, asserts that it is in pure Arabic by an Arab, Muhammad, two Arabs. Yet, according to my own studies, I was very surprised at the fact that many of the Muhammadan linguists had great difficulty in finding the Arabic origins or roots of many of the most important words in the Quran. Can you elaborate? Contrary to what many Muhammadan Muslim authors have us believe, Muhammad and Arabia were surrounded by higher religions and civilizations with whom they had constant and full contact and from whom they borrowed numerous religious and cultural terms. This fact was fully recognized by the earliest Muslim exegetes who showed no hesitation in noting words as Christian, Iranian or Jewish in origin as were compiled by al-Suyuti in his Itqan, al-Tabari, al-Baghawi, al-Razi and many more. It was under the later scholars such as al-Shafi'i that this fact, for obvious sectarian reasons, was pushed into the background and an orthodox doctrine was elaborated, later turned into a dogma, to the effect that the Qur'an is a unique product of the Arabic language. The modern Muhammadan scholar is seriously distressed by any discussion of the foreign origin of words in the Qur'an. It is extremely rare, based on proven historical and linguistic grounds, that an uncivilized people, such as the pagan Arabs were, would not be enormously influenced by the surrounding more superior civilizations, religions and cultures. For the Muhammadan Arabs to pretend that the Arabic language per se, prior to the Arabian conquest of the surrounding civilizations, contained all words used in the Quran is totally absurd, contrary to facts, unsubstantiated and desperate wishful thinking. It is invariably the more dominant powers or civilizations that impose their language upon the lesser ones, as actually happened initially by the Greeks, the Romans, and finally by the Arabs in their turn. Anyone dispassionately studying the Qur'an will realize that Muhammad drew his inspiration not from his own primitive pagan religious background, but most certainly from the vocabulary and religious terms of the great monotheistic religions that had already found root in the spiritual soil of Arabia, especially the Jews and Christians. It is extremely important to point out that there were very powerful Arabian Christian tribes who were dominant both in Syria and Iraq and who wrote and spoke Syriac. Vocabulary of Syriac origin was already coming into use in Arabia long before Muhammad and his Quran. The court of Al-Hira in Iraq was a rendezvous of the poets and literature of the day. Many of the most prominent poets of pre-Islamic Arabia, such as Amr al-Qais, Mutalammis, and Abdi bin Zayd, were Christians, and their poetry was naturally impregnated with Christian words and ideas. Even in the extant poetry of the such non-Christians as Al-Nabigha and Al-Ash'a, one finds the strong influences of Syrian Christianity because they spent time at the court of Al-Hira. The Ahadith and the biography of Muhammad assert that he traveled to Syria, Al-Sham, both as a child and later as a merchant on behalf of his wife Khadija, who was not only a Hanif, but also associated with the Christianity through her uncle Waraka bin Nawfal. Muhammad was surrounded by enormously powerful non-Arabian influences that shaped his thoughts, his inspirations, and his Quranic prose, and to pretend that he was not affected by them is contrary to logic, to reality, to veracity, and to history. Chapter 12, verse 2. We have sent it down as an Arabic Quran in order that ye may learn wisdom. Chapter 20, 113. Thus have we sent this down as an Arabic Quran. Chapter 26, 195. In the perspicuous Arabic tongue. Chapter 39, 28. It is a Quran in Arabic without any crookedness therein in order that they may regard against evil. Chapter 41, 3, a book whereof the verses are explained in detail, a Quranic in Arabic for people to understand. According to the Ahadith, the Quran was revealed to Muhammad in seven modes. Why were so many modes necessary if it were such a pure form of Arabic in the first place? Al-Tirmidhi Hadith 2215 narrated by Ubay ibn Ka'b. Ubay told of Allah Messenger meeting Gabriel and saying, I have been sent Gabriel 
to a people who are unlettered, among whom are old women and old men, boys and girls, and men who have never read a book. He replied, the Quran Muhammad has been sent down in seven modes. al Suyuti cites in his Itqan about 118 words which are not of Arabic origin, but from Hebrew, Persian, Abyssinian, Aramaic, Syriac, etc., most of which are among the most important, without which the Quran could not possibly make sense. The following are only a few examples. From Hebrew and Aramaic, Madrasa, school, is from Beit Midrash. Jahannam, hell, from Gehinnom. Shaitan, Satan, from Satan. Musr, Egypt, from Misraim. From the Christian Abyssinians, Mihrab, niche. Minbar, pulpit. Burhan, proof. Mi'raj, ladder. From the Persian, Firdaus, paradise. Firind, sword. Syriac, Isa, Jesus, Salah, prayer, from the Greek, Dinar, currency, Dinarius, Iblis, devil, Diabolos, Injil, gospel. The Quran asserts repeatedly that it is a new scripture for the Arabs, hence it would have been impossible for the native Arabic vocabulary and language to all of a sudden create and invent new words and terminology to express all its new ideas to fit the occasion. In fact, many of the words, terms and concepts were already available off the shelf, so to speak, to Muhammad to plagiarize, plunder, pirate and or pervert to suit his agenda. When one studies the subjects above, based upon the works of the Muhammadan exegetes, who had dealt with this very difficult but important matter, one will find out that they were themselves at a loss as to the roots of many of the words, especially since they were not linguists in the four, five, or six languages that the Qur'an had copied words from. They actually had the most meager philological resources at their disposal, so much so that al suyuti and those who preceded him completely missed the fact that several of the words that they alleged to have been foreign were in fact Arabic in origin. The Qur'an cannot exist without the foreign words that permeate its verses and chapters.